meeting of the Michigan State Capital Commission on thir or Monday, June 13th, 12th. 12th. Wh wh whatever day this is, we're having a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so meeting will come to order, please, and I'll ask the uh, secretary to call the, the attendance. Chair Candler. Here. Vice Chair Bauer. Here. Mr. Bullman. Here. Mr. Bolin. Here. Mr. Brown. Here. Mr. Oberlin. Here. All members are present. That's a quorum. Thank you. Uh, we also have uh, circulated some dates for uh, the next meeting to, uh, of this commission, and the date that seemed to work out well for everybody was July 31st. Is that still good with everybody? Good. Okay. So that's, that will be our, our meeting, uh, our next meeting, meeting for July. Next issue is the approval of the uh, minutes of April 28th meeting. Uh, are there any corrections, uh, changes, additions that we need to make to the minutes? Right. I, would, I would move the approval. Uh, Rich Brown moved, moves and supported by Commissioner Bauer that the minutes be approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous votes in favor. Next item up is the Executive Director's Report, Mr. Rob Blackshaw. We have several major projects going on, and it's good for everybody in the Commission to, to know, and the public to know about this. Um, this. This is a big building, and there are a lot of things that you don't really see happening, but there, there are, some of them are enormous projects, and uh, here's the report about them. Good morning, Commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this morning. I'll just give you a brief update on everything that's going on. There's really not a lot of new material, but updated material. So some of the things I'll tell, um, talk about today are just reiterations and reminders of things that have happened and are coming up. First of all, our maintenance um, storage facility next, down by the North Annex is almost completed. You'll start seeing exterior fencing um, disappearing this week. The northeast ground floor door is officially open and there is a desk out there manned by house sergeants which mimics the south side of the Capitol building for entrance. Um, and that is open for anyone who has swipe access and the proper credentials to get into that, that side of it. Um, one thing we're waiting for is some interior electrical components which were still part of a supply chain issue. But that's going to be installed in the next week or two. We expect our final inspection from the building inspectors on the week of the 26th of June. We can occupy it by the end of the month. And so after the 4th of July break, um, we'll start moving all of our equipment from the warehouse back into the facility down there. Um, so if you guys are ever in that area, please feel free to stop by. It really did turn out nice, and I think this is another great addition to the Capitol, and it'll help us really reduce our footprint out at the warehouse. In fact, when we're completed, um, we're gonna really analyze the use, because now the warehouse is way too big for our use. So we'll start looking for something smaller and hopefully something closer with better security than where we are currently out on the north side of town with our facility there. Um, our third floor toilet room project or restroom project um, as people, we all go back and forth on that. But per our last update, I mentioned that we'll be shutting down the third floor toilet rooms to route out the vertical piping that has coagulated over the years. Um, we believe this piping is well over 50 years old and in some cases could still be some original piping. But in order to remedy the situation and not damage removing any historical fabric in the rooms, the hallways, the corridors, we'll be installing fiberglass sleeves in the vertical piping in both the men's room and the women's room from third floor all the way down to the sub-basement. This work will start later this month and will be finished around Labor Day weekend. In fact, we have people who will be camera putting cameras down the piping on the women's side on June 19th and then we will probably start the labor and shutdown of these facilities in July. And away we go. The decorative painting project has started, as you guys are well aware. We have shut down the ground floor rotunda. And in fact, we have removed the glass for the flag cases and removed the Civil War battle flags that were, were there since the 1990s, the early 1990s. So just opening those up and exposing those, it was pretty monumental achievement. Um, but as you can see, the scaffolding has started being installed and for the next month and a half, we'll see steady progress. They are loading up from the ground floor on the west hand side and also taking it up the steps into the first floor. So again, they are here early in the morning, they load the scaffolding and then spend the rest of the day inside the rotunda as they build that up. 
One thing we um, are doing as part of our documentation phase of this project, we have two time-lapse cameras installed, um, one right at the ground floor and one up at the sixth level right now, which is the colonnade level. And I'll start um, showing some of these pictures every week, every other week, to start showing progress on our website, on our social media pages, and I'll also send snapshots to U.S. commissioners via email along the way just to give you an update of things that are happening and some um, pictures that people typically don't see just to make sure you stay updated on this project. Um, the next steps are as follows for this project. The, once the scaffolding goes up, again, we'll continue the project by updating and replacing the dry fire system that's up in the dome right now. The heads are out of date and will be updated with a more code compliant fixture um, now that we have access to this system. Additionally, we'll be upstate, uh, excuse me, we'll be installing UV protection on the windows to help reduce the UV rays that come through the windows and shine directly onto the decorative surfaces as well as the allegorical paintings. As I mentioned in the past, some days we recorded in last August, there can be a 50 degree surface temperature difference between morning and afternoon. So you can only imagine the expansion and contraction of the metal in the paint in the paintings that um, it's really taking on those. So that's something we're really looking to reduce the expansion and contraction of. Um, but I'll give you more updates as that comes along at the same time. Upon completion of that piece, we'll start our decorative surface painting and cleaning to the surfaces that have really not been touched since the early 90s. Additionally, the allegorical paintings in the muses will be cleaned and conserved. And again, these haven't been touched since 1990. So it's a great time to get back up. Um, and take care of those. This project's forecasted to take between eight to 10 months. And as I stated earlier, I'll make sure I give regular updates on this project and we will uh, be creating media content to make sure you guys are kept up to date on that as well. We are just finishing up a project on the ground floor east wing, our north orientation room. Um, matter of fact, we have received some really, really neat artifacts back and I'm going to turn this over just for Valerie to talk about it um, but if you have time today go after the meeting just to see some of the artifacts that have been put in place that we have not seen in years and Valerie I'll let you explain a little bit better than I can. We have two large pieces that we've been able to bring back with the help of the House and the Senate. Um, one is the top of the original House rostrum, which came off in the 1930s when we updated our voting system. It has been in various collections ever since and we were able to um, bring it into our collection and then work with a very skilled woodworker from southeast Michigan to actually rebuild something similar to the original base and it looks absolutely fantastic. They did a great job. Some of you have also heard me talk about the pieces of library wood that were donated to our collection a few years ago, um, which could have actually come from this room because this was part of the old state library. These pieces were salvaged when the last of the bookcases were taken out in the 1970s. Um, they were disassembled and in the barn of a local woodworker for the next several decades. And he donated them back to us a couple years ago. And we were able to work with the Senate carpenters to actually have them rebuild one of the old library bookcases. So both of those pieces were brought in last Thursday. Um, it was very neat to see them installed. We've been posting about it on social media, so you may have already seen pictures. But if anyone is interested, we're happy to um, show those off after the meeting. I have to say, I'm not as passionate as libraries as Valerie is by any means, <laughs> but it is interesting to see that piece on display and has it looked back in the day. And I know it never happened, and I promise you, I'm not going to come and ask for this, but it would be neat to see this space as a library once again, back the way it was. It reminds you of that. <laughs> I said I won't. So. Um, so that was for that. Um, I just want to talk briefly about our events and our tours. We've officially reached pre-COVID activity with all of our scheduled rallies and events. I mean, we're blowing the doors off of Heritage Hall. And what I mean by that, our, we're scheduled a year out and we get requests on a daily basis to continue to schedule that room. It is amazing even as far as other state agencies who want to be over here and schedule all their meetings. So we're not even to our one year point where we're gonna really sit down and reevaluate or just evaluate the use of it, but it's really served its purpose. There's not a lot of the activities and the banging of the historic fabric into the building. 
the school kids already have a, a safer place to drop off and it's really nice to see that. In addition to that, we do know that all the tour group numbers are back to full pre-COVID amount and in addition to some of the online tours we're still doing. So we feel really pleased in that and appreciate all the support that the commission has given us to build that and put that together. Um, so I just thought it was worth that. Additionally, we know that one of our favorite um, activities is the farmer's market and that's coming back full bore this year. The last couple years they've had modified versions of it due to COVID but this year we, we know they're going to be back in full so there's one in um, the last it's the third Thursday of July, third Thursday of August and the third Thursday of September and the September one is a really big one but we are super excited to host that again. The ground should not be under construction for the first time in seven years so it'll be nice to have everything back and really um, illustrate the wares and what they're doing out there. So I don't have any other big updates right now, but I'm open for questions. Anybody have a question? Rob, just a quick question, uh, and this is totally unrelated to the exact the projects here, but uh, I've noticed that several, a number of weeks ago, up in the fourth floor, I was looking down on the northwest corner of the, the lawn, and it looked pretty browned out. And that was, is there a problem there we're having, or? No, what that what the problem with that is, um, the irrigation valve that served the new area over the maintenance facility was tied into the same valve. Okay. So as of last week, we finally separated that, updated those valves for more sections. So if we do have to shut an area off, it doesn't shut down an area altogether. So you'll see you'll start seeing a difference within the next week or two, guaranteed. All right, thank you, sir. I appreciate Good that. question. Any other questions? I have just one comment to make. Uh, thank you very much, Rob, for your work. Uh, I, you know, I've been chair of the commission now for about six months, and really I've been making a, made a point to be here at least one or two days a week and work with all the staff. And, Rob, I appreciate all the work you, you do, the leadership you provide, and, and the, your reports you give, and all the staff that work with you. Um, we, the, it's, it's, once you do, once you work with the group like this and get closer to what's going on in the operations here, as, as I have in the last six months, you, you realize how, how busy these people are. Uh, dealing with uh, events and tour guides and uh, keeping the building up to speed. And if you notice, the building is clean. I mean, it's really clean. You walk up and down the hallways, everybody's done a good job. So I think we all need to recognize the wonderful staff we have, the quality work they do, and how much we appreciate that. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. So I have to give a second unsolicited uh, compliment, and he'll be embarrassed, but... Um, our chair, Bill Candler, I don't think any of us realized, which is often the case with Gary Randall as our chair, how much work it is to be chair. And um, we've all realized that. So first of all, kudos to Gary Randall. We all know, you know what a job that man did for so many years. But Bill Candler, you know, I, I think we all, the commissioners know, but he is spending a lot of time as a volunteer, as, as chair. So we thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, who's Gary Randall? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have our historian research that. <laughs> and we hope he's watching this online today. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> okay, we're through the uh, part of the agenda that is uh, that includes the items that this commission has typically, you know, and historically been involved in. Now we're stepping into our much newer role uh, dealing with security in the Capitol building. So we're going to have an update on, general update on some things going on in the Capitol building. First of all, the procedures uh, that we're developing as to, you know, how, uh, what will be allowed, what will not be allowed, and how, how the whole thing will work. And the other part is the equipment, the update on the equipment that will uh, help us detect weapons. So I think, uh, Commissioner Bowman, you want to go first and give us a little update on your work on the ideas for the uh, procedures? Thank you. Um, we continue to research what would be an appropriate policy uh, for providing additional security uh, in the Capitol building. We are reaching out to the Attorney General, to the State Police, and to the sergeants at both a, a House and Senate. Um, we're trying to get to a point where, where we all feel comfortable with a policy that's going to provide the highest level of security for for our, our staff, our employees, our visitors uh, um, in this building. We are hoping that uh, at our next meeting we will have um, a policy ready to share. 
We have a, a second process that we're following is the, the general procedures document for use of the Capitol building needs to be updated to reflect this new policy. Just the nature of that update uh, requires kind of a comprehensive changes to the procedures document. So we're working on, on updating that along the same lines. Um, that document will, will if things come together, we'll at least have a draft of the new procedures document ready um, to go at the next meeting, which would incorporate the, the new securities policy. So we're continuing to work on it. Uh, we understand it's important, and we, we're going to try to do the, the best job we can with it. Thanks. Any questions with Commissioner Bowman? Uh, we're really fortunate to have uh, Commissioner Bowman with us. He's a former bill drafting uh, master. and. Uh, to have him work with us on drafting the procedures for a very important issue is, is really quite a privilege for us. And so, and he's done a lot of work too. So thanks a lot, John. Mr. Blackshaw. Um, just to give you an update on um, the weapon detection systems equipment. Um, as you're well aware, we issued an RFP, received back a few vendors, evaluated very closely, and we did issue a purchase order to a company called People Driven Technologies out of Grand Rapids. They're a vendor of Evolve Technologies, which is a pass-through weapons detection system. So that is, we are in the queue, the equipment has been ordered, and it's about an eight-week lead time, so we anticipate getting the equipment in, in August at the latest. Once received, we will install and begin the commissioning and training of the equipment. Our goal is to install, train, and be ready for the legislator return from the summer recess, as well as when the school groups become larger and come back to the building after Labor Day. So we're our anticipated arrival of after Labor Day, when people come back, we'll be ready to detect weapons as they come into the building. In the meantime, I've been working with the House and Senate sergeants and the Senate staffs on picking out our secondary inspection equipment. More specifically, the detection wands they'll use for secondary inspection tools at the north and south ground floor entrances. Um, we think we've picked out a product and we'll get ready to order those. And Michigan State Police has also shared interest in using those additionally. Um, so we'll have six of those on site that we can use for secondary inspections. And also I've been working with the Michigan State Police on reviewing and finalizing a couple of x-ray machines that'll be placed in the building. Um, wanna make sure that I'm not picking it out. I wanna make sure it's something they're very comfortable with because they're gonna be using the materials. Um, so I'll keep you up to date you know, of when um, that equipment is purchased and what type. I'll send you an email which gives you uh, most of that information. Um, with, with graphic illustrations as well, because I know sometimes that tells a better story than a narrative. Last thing I'm continuing. Okay, stop just for a quick second. Will you explain to the commission where, what, what the purpose is of the x-ray machines? So they know. Yes, the x-ray machines will be used as a secondary inspection. For instance, if someone walks through, could be a laptop, could be a backpack um, that sets off the weapon detection system Evolve. We'll be pulling those people aside saying, you know, we like to inspect this uh, additionally. Um, we'll take them into a side room or a side area, and then we have the opportunity to either wand for secondary inspecting or run a backpack, for instance, or a laptop through an x-ray machine, which will then detect um, more items than will be detected with the Evolve. So it's an additional inspection if necessary. And, and also you're going to have them at the north entrance, right, for vendors and uh, caterers, et cetera? Yes, the north entrance, we're still, that's still in play, but we're definitely with caterers, contractors, we almost know that they're going to be 100% inspected every time. For instance, we know that the elevator inspector is going to come in with a bag of tools. Some of them can be perceived as a weapon, but we're working with them. We're also working with the, our vendors and making sure they give us a roster. So what I mean by that, we know we have three regular folks who come in for our elevator inspectors or elevator contractors. We'll know if they come in, we can give them a light inspection, but if it's a newer person, it's going to be a lot more vigorous, or we can even deny access depending on who it is. It's just trying to take that extra step to increase our security and to make sure no one slips in um, behind the scenes. So it's, it's something we're still studying, but yes, that, that's active. Any other questions, comments? I have, a little, I have one more thing to add. Oh, well, you yeah. did, right. One thing I'm still continuing to work on is the human verified proactive gun detection and software system. I know that's a mouthful, but we're working with a software that can be attached to our camera systems that can detect weapons on the grounds if they're brandished. 
Um, there's two different companies we're working with right now. We're actually doing a pilot project with one company who is attached with Evolve. We have their server and we'll be attaching it to some cameras on the east side. So for instance, if someone comes out, brandishes a weapon, it will send an alert to everyone who's monitoring those systems currently. It gives them a heads up of, hey, there's someone on the grounds who might be coming to the building. So it's another layer of protection. Additionally, I've worked with the House and the Senate business offices, and we are going to um, position some of our exterior cameras to the front of the Senate office building and the House office building, which will also provide additional layer of security for those buildings as we all work together anyway. And the same folks who occupy those buildings regularly visit the Capitol building, so we think it's a smart layer to add. The final details are all still being worked out, but once I complete this, I, and I'll definitely give more information to the commission, but it will give our overall security platform a great enhancement from what we have currently, and hopefully it will definitely decrease the risk of any potential incidents that are going to happen at the Capitol building. So that's the update I have for weapons detection systems here at the Capitol. Thanks, Rob. Good job. Appreciate that. Any other questions, comments? Unfortunately, I, I really, it's really sorry we have to do this and lock the building down and put all this equipment in the building. It's really a shame, but I think there's really the reality of the world today. Is, is it, you can't ignore it, but it's, I'm sorry we have to do this. I really am. Thank you. Is there any other business that anybody wants to bring up that's not on the agenda? Nothing? How about public comment? Anybody from the public that's here to comment? If not, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Tim, move and Dan support without objection. So we're, we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for showing up here. <laughs>